say hi to Abby. Way to get girl, Abby girl. Good girl. Hey, you guys, thanks so much for watching the replay. I am gonna turn it all set up. Hello, hello, give me a second. Let me put it in the tripod. Do, do, do. Awesome, cool. Kaylin's here. I think Sherry is here. Welcome, guys. Hello. Uh, oh, Lauren's here. Hello, Lauren. You guys are all hopping on. Awesome. And I'm going to hop right in. So I'm going to let you know, too, that, hey, Joshua, how are you? Uh, Fish209, you're hopping on. I know. My trainers are watching the scope, and they're, like, about to start a dog training class, uh, which is awesome. Thanks, you guys, for being here. And uh, I have, hey, Fish209, how are you? But yeah, so I trained dolphins. I also trained sea lions and seals, exotic birds, and um, penguins. <laughs> penguins. Joshua, do we do a shadow program? We are actually developing a shadow program right now, so if you're interested, you can definitely shoot me an email. Um, my virtual assistant is writing up all the copy that will be the new addition to our webpage that would educate people or tell people that we offer that, but the answer is yes. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can come spend time with our trainers here in Maryland and watch what we do when we're interacting with the dogs in all the different avenues. Um, what's that, Kim? Where are you living? I Right now, I live, I'm right now, I'm in, right outside of Annapolis, Maryland. And as far as the shadow program for dog trainers, that would take place in Annapolis, Maryland. And I personally also spend half my time in New York City, so I have a pretty cool lifestyle where I get to live uh, in both places. Why won't my dog come in when I call him? He'll whine by the back door, and when I go to let him in, I think you're going to continue your question. Why won't he come in? So it sounds like, oh, for trainers, yep. Yeah, Karen, I know, that's okay. At this point, Karen, you're going to end up being a dog trainer. Um, he runs away wanting to play. So awesome. Um, Big Papa, 69420. Hello from Finland. Hello, hello. So why, so your dog sits at the back door and whines, and you're thinking it's because he wants to come in. So you go to open the door to let him in, and instead he, uh, questions, I love it. Um, so instead he runs away and wants you to go play with him outside. I think that's what you're saying. And um, so I'm going to answer that question. Chances are he's not whining by the back door because he wants to come in. He probably, uh, oh my goodness, when you catch him, he gets aggressive and bites. Okay, so it sounds like you've got a whole slew of issues and problems, and some of them may be misreading his intentions and his body language. So if he's going to try to bite you, obviously you have to be super careful um, in how you're handling him because I don't want you to get hurt. But um, what's going to be important then for me, if I had a dog that was doing that, I probably would they would lose their freedom. Um, yeah, those are my dogs. Actually, there's three back there. He, my dog would lose their freedom to be off leash out in the backyard if that were the case. So um, Big Papa, start with that. Leash your dog outside so you just do not have those problems and then work on um, all sorts of conditioning as far as setting up some structure and leadership, uh, working with your dog and highly reinforcing all the things he's doing that you like. So somebody asked about my dogs. I'm going to introduce them to you in case you don't already know them. See if I can't figure out how to point. This one right here is Abby. This one is Boomer. And the one on the couch back there is Molly. And I train any kind of dogs. These two are my, they're rescues, they're Shih Tzu, Beagle Mix, and the German Shepherd is in the middle. You have a harness and a lead line now. On it. Okay, so um, if you're inside and he's outside, that's what I would... You're doing good then. Okay, cool. You're on the right track. Awesome. Yeah, but I wouldn't chase, I wouldn't try to chase him down and grab him to the point that he'd be getting aggressive and trying to bite you back, if that makes sense. Somebody asked about teaching heel. Do I teach heel? I don't usually teach how do you teach heel. Yeah, so I was getting right to that one. Um, I don't, thank you for asking again though, because I don't always remember the question that you ask while I'm answering the one. So teaching heel, for me, most of, the pet, most of the dogs I work with are just people's pets. Um, they're not interested in competing. We're not talking about high level um, obedience work where the dog is you know, right by your side and staring up at you the whole time. So I've trained that to my German Shepherd, but my other two don't know how to do that. Um, I train the German Shepherd only because he loves learning things like that. 
So typically with our clients' pets, uh, I don't train things like that. I just train um, for them to walk calmly on the leash. And, <laughs> oh, Big Papa, that's, you have to be careful, Big Papa, be careful. Um, so most of the time I just have a dog right on a leash walking with me, but I train them that they can't pull. So different than a heel and a heel position, I just walk and from my perspective, I look at it like I just want them to have good manners. I don't want them to drag me anywhere or pull. I want them to stay right next to me. And the way I phrase it is I want at least 25% of their attention to be focused on me. And then I give them the luxury of 75% of their attention can be on their surroundings. So they cannot disconnect from me completely and just go completely the other way um, and chase something. Now, if you had somebody that really wanted to train heel, and for whatever reason, um, I'm not gonna enter him the circuit. No, I'm gonna scent train him. I'm starting in two weeks. I'm gonna start to scent train him, and I might do some trials for, for scent work with him. Uh, that seems to be his, his thing. Uh, yeah, food to lure. Jo I mean, Joshua, that's a great um, point. Did you use food to lure? If your dog's outside, you want him to get him come in. Careful, especially when you say lure. Most people, Joshua, without, a lot of um, specific training. Most people would just end up careful on the timing of luring. Yes, thank you, Lauren. Most people, when they go to lure their dog, actually end up, um, they accidentally reinforce behavior that they don't want. Uh, that usually the, the behavior that you don't want is initiated and then you think, oh, I should lure him. So yes, you could use food, right? I wouldn't chase him either. It teaches them to run away. Good job, Sherry, awesome. And uh, yeah, so, could you expand on that? I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about luring. You can use food to help shape behaviors. No problem. Um, right, the lure and the timing. Okay, so you can use, just as an emergency, yeah. Um, you've trained Prince and Tina sometimes, I don't know his background. Um, but he is something else. Okay, you don't know his background, that's fine. So yeah, definitely be careful. Uh, you don't want to get yourself hurt, don't take anything for granted. You can use food to train, and you can use food for shaping. So, oh, awesome, good job. Um, there's, that's no problem at all. You can even use food to get a dog to come in from outside, and I actually wouldn't have any problems if somebody went outside um, into their backyard and just like shook a bag of treats and had the dog come over and walk in the house. That technically is not a problem. The problem I have is that most people don't do that. Most people go into the backyard and they call their dog and their dog blows them off and ignores them and then they shake the bag of treats. Now you're reinforcing behavior that you don't want. Uh, if that's what you're thinking. Okay, perfect Joshua, thanks for clarifying that. So if you are luring a dog, a lot of times if you're, um, should you use food when you recall inside for a while to build the habit? Absolutely, Fish209, absolutely. Um, I have to plug my phone in. And uh, food is awesome for training recall, so definitely use food. Uh, you just want to use it correctly. You want to be sure that you're reinforcing stuff that you want. So, um, so when you are, that's why, the way that Joshua phrased it, it sounded, and that's why I said, and then Lauren, who works with me, said, same thing about luring and timing is, uh, hello from Russia. Uh, that is tricky. Sometimes with, you just don't, the food has to come not in response to anything that the dog has done that's wrong. Does that make sense? You asked to expand a little on luring and timing. Does that make sense? Um, did I expand enough to answer your question as far as what was confusing about that? I hope so. Um, let me know, just say yes if that makes sense. And um, so cool. Are there any other questions? Or do we need to still talk about Big Papa and his dog? But I feel like Big Papa, we could talk all night about your dog, but um, I just wanna see if anybody else had any other questions too. It's hard to wait. You guys are all typing and then they're all gonna come up like exactly at the same time. Makes sense, awesome, good. I'm glad that makes sense. Um, I worked, one of the times, I'll tell you a story. Um, can you lure them and then put in a skill in between giving them a treat such as set? Um, I think so, Joshua, thank you so much. It would be a dream to have a girlfriend with your knowledge. Um, Joshua, I think so. Um, I'm not 100% sure what you meant by how you phrased it, but I think you're talking about can you use food to shape a behavior and that you're using the food to get the dog into, let's say, a position, um, a sit or a down, something like that. And if that's what you're asking me, Joshua, then yes, you could do that. Uh, what food do you give for your dog? I feed my dog a grain-free kibble 
that is a very high quality uh, and it's duck and sweet potatoes and peas I think is what's in it um, that's what I feed mine and it's mainly just because this guy here I'm trying to keep him off of chicken recall give command then treat awesome question fish 209 I always like to um, so for me I don't actually give the behavior that I'm training a word or a name or anything until I'm willing to bet five dollars that the dog will get it right so when I first start training a recall, I never say come or here or anything like that. Uh, no chicken, no chicken just for the, yeah, for the German Shepherd. I'm keeping him off of chicken because his skin is itchy, so I'm trying to figure out if it's a chicken allergy. Um, so I don't give them, um, yeah, $5. I wanna, before I say the word come, I wanna know they're going to come. And so I don't use, I don't use the word come until I'm willing to bet five bucks that they'll do it. And if I'm not willing to bet five bucks that they'll come, I don't say come because if I said it, they probably won't come anyway. So that's only gonna, my goal is that when I call my dogs, they come 100% of the time. But when I'm first starting to train that behavior, I'm really picky about when I say the word come because I always want them to get it right. So I have a really great blog article about this on my website if you guys wanna read it. Um, I think you'll really appreciate it. So pauseandpossibilities.com is the website, pauseandpossibilities.com. You might be able to see that on my shirt. And in the section under blog, you'd have to scroll back probably a few pages. It's called, um, thank you, Lauren, it's called Do Not Call Your Dog. And the reason I titled it that, uh, besides just to capture your attention, is because I'm talking about, literally, I'm telling a story. There was a time when these guys were puppies. Abby was out in the backyard, and I was just about to call them. And I looked, and she was really busy sniffing something. And I wasn't willing to bet $5 that she'd stop sniffing and come to me when I called her. So I waited. I waited until she was done sniffing and took a few extra steps away. Really, it took maybe 20 seconds I waited. Then when I called her, she turned around and came running over to me right away. So my, And then I, I clicked, and I highly reinforced her for coming when I called her. So your goal is that your dogs almost always get it right. And at the very beginning of the stages of the training, it's because you're taking responsibility to make sure that they'll get it right. Uh, of course, then there's management. You can put them on a long leash, and that way I'm willing to bet $5 it, that they'll come if they're on a leash because once I call them one time, if they don't come, I can just reel them in there. Um, if you don't call them, how if you don't, how do you get them if you don't say come? I usually just um, make a little noise or pat my legs or do something that looks interesting to the dog and then when they start to come towards me, I reinforce them. So I use a clicker. Um, hopefully, I don't know if everybody on here is familiar with clicker training, but you may or may not have heard of it. And dog training month, I forgot it was National Dog Training Month. Thank you for reminding me that. Uh, pet pros, American Pet Pros, awesome. Yes, happy National Dog Training Month. So um, so that is, um, I put them on a long leash and then they'll always get it right so you can call them repeatedly at that point. And, um, but otherwise, only if you think they're gonna get it right, then you can call them. And I do that with any behavior I'm training. So if I'm teaching a dog to roll over, I don't start by saying roll over, I start by using a treat and luring them to get them into position so that they will eventually be rolling over. And once I get them rolling over, and sometimes with dogs that might take a, several training sessions to get them to the point where they're rolling over, hey dog mama, once they're rolling over, then I start to say roll over. And here's the reason, is that if I start day one, session one, saying roll over, and then I go to work the dog, and let's say they don't have a clue what I'm doing and they don't roll over, they're gonna hear the word roll over over and over and over and over and over again, and it's gonna mean nothing to them, and they're not gonna be rolling over, and they won't be making any kind of connections at all. The best case scenario is that they'll tune it out. The worst case scenario is that they will actively think to themselves, Roll over, aha, that's that word that means nothing. So then when they get to the point where they're actually rolling over and you're trying to pair the word, it's actually a lot harder for the dog to make the connection that the word that you're saying is linked with the action that they're doing now versus what you were doing several days ago that you were saying roll over the whole time. So if you wait to say roll over until the dog is rolling over, um, an aha moment, I love that Sherry, thank you. I'm glad you um, typed that in. 
That's awesome. So once they're rolling over and you go to lure them into it and you say, um, hey, it was so nice. Yeah, I'm writing the blog, so I'll send that to you. I'll send you the blog, um, Chelsea, even before I post it live because it'll be in the queue to go out. It won't go out right away, but I'll send you the blog uh, ahead of time. So um, once now that they're, they're rolling over, I will, I'll say roll over and then I'll lure them and they'll roll right over. It's super simple for the dog to make the connection then that that's what that is. So cool. Um, I have about five more minutes before I have to run and um, I have a webinar tonight for some of the premier clients in my online dog training program so I need to prepare for that. Um, how to calm an overexcited puppy during a walk. Uh, I actually just missed who asked the question, but I'm happy to answer it. So I uh, am a big fan of training dogs to be calm. That's really what our specialty is. So whether they're calm in, at home, ta-da, or if they're calm out on a walk, really to me makes no difference. So I would need to make sure that whatever dog you're mentioning to um, private obedience classes. Hey, from Maryland. Hello, hello. I'm just outside of Annapolis right now. Uh, you probably know that though from the maps on Periscope. The, uh, I'll teach a dog to be calm at home. I'll teach a dog to be calm outside when there are very few distractions. And then the last step of that plan is obviously teaching dogs to be calm in environments where there are a lot of distractions. So, hey Molly girl, big stretch. Uh, you've been to Annapolis, that's awesome. So to answer your question, how do you get a dog to be calm outside, you first have to start by making sure that they can be calm inside. And so, um, the, one of the best calming exercises I like to do, how cute are they? <laughs> oh, I can't get over how cute they are. So I like to do a calming ex exercise in the house where I put the leash on their collar and then I literally take the leash and like put it under my foot. So, <laughs> I know they're so cute. So that um, I'm, I hold the leash. Uh, I, I've demonstrated this on several of my periscopes, but, um, but this is really, uh, I'll talk you through this one, but if it doesn't make sense from how I speak about it right now, um, I'm going to recommend you go back and look at some of my other periscopes. You can catch all of them on your run in the class. Hey, Lauren, have fun. Go train those dogs. Um, and say hi to Sam for me, who's going to be at class tonight. I have a catch.me account, catch.me forward slash Kim, pause and pause, same username. And if you go to my catch account, you can look at every Periscope I've ever done. So um, they're all there and there's definitely lots of them where we talk about calming exercises. Um, if you look, scroll way back, I had an eight month old crazy puppy at one point and I Periscoped every day for a week. And the beginning of those Periscopes, that puppy was insane. I think I remember one Periscope, I was sitting on the couch behind me and I sat down, the puppy was just climbing all over me. I was like, I can't wait to teach this puppy how to be calm. So that's what makes me think of when you were asking about your how to be calm. But you take the leash, put it on their collar, like a flat buckle collar, and then basically just put the leash underneath your foot and then like a pulley system, like if the leash is under your foot, you just pull the leash so that it gets slightly tight on their neck. Um, it doesn't have to be crazy tight, but just tight enough so that they don't have freedom to really walk very far from you. And then you just wait. And sometimes it takes a long time, um, but you just wait until the dog starts to settle down. And what the dog is going to realize and what they're going to learn, the value of the exercise, is that if they're standing up and trying to move, they're gonna, it's going to be slightly uncomfortable on their neck. But once they lie down, the pressure, the tension that they're feeling on their neck at all completely goes away. So what they learn in that moment is that lying down gives them a release of the pressure. Um, and so you can condition your dogs to just lie. And then they lie down and then you can then you continue the exercise long enough so that you can get a calm state of mind, which is what I, one of the things I was talking to Chelsea about online today is um, how difficult sometimes it is to get a calm state of mind. People come to you with a dog where you're trying to calm them. I don't let people do that. So if I were outside trying to calm a dog down and I'm working the dog and I'm training the dog and people wanted to come up and pet them, I would just say, um, not right now, they are training. Uh, does calm on command best come from getting the dog comfortable with long duration down, please? A lot of trainers fish, um, fish, a lot of trainers talk about that and talk about getting a calm state of mind from a really long duration place command. And I don't really often do that. I do it with my German Shepherd 
but I don't, I don't do it with these guys. As you saw, Molly was free to get up from the couch and walk wherever she wants and then lay down wherever she wants. So they're completely not on a command at all. He is on a place command. They are not. Um, so it depends on the dog. It depends on what the dog needs. It depends on how much structure the dog needs. Um, but to answer your question, what's the best way to get calm? For me, it's this work with the leash because I always would, can have the leash with me so that if I'm in the house, I can easily put the leash on. If I'm out of the house, I always have the leash and I don't always have a place board um, or, or a bed for them. Can you say no or ask them to wait until the dog is calm? I'm working on this. You can say no or ask them to wait. Oh, the people, yes. Tell the people no. Like, no, they're training right now. Or if the dog is calm and you want to reinforce, if your dog would find it really reinforcing to interact with the people, right, not all dogs do. If your dog would love it if those people pet them, um, and you and your dog is being hello and your dog is being calm and you want to reinforce your dog for being calm you could release your dog and let him say hi to those people as sort of like a, a treat for having been calm um, so that's up to you and the stage thank you for the hearts by the way it's up to you and the stage that you're at in the training and I think I'm going to have to wind it down. I have to leave. I have somewhere I need to be at 6.15. And then I need to come back and get ready for my webinar tonight where I'll be answering questions for the premier members of my online dog training program. Hello from Turkey. You are very welcome, Sherry. I will be back tomorrow. I can't wait to connect with you guys again. Thanks, everybody, for jumping on. You are very welcome. I always appreciate being here. I know that your time and your attention are very valuable and I really do appreciate you giving me both of them. Thanks you guys, have an awesome, awesome night and I'll see you.